Welcome, friends, to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, and we welcome you to this time where we can join together to grow closer in love of God and neighbor. Take a deep breath, breathing in God's presence, breathing out the concerns of the day, that we may know God is with us, that we may come to the cross, lay our burdens down, and be raised up to new and eternal life, now and always. Hear the affirmation in our petition. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be your plagues. O grave, I will be your destruction. Pity is hidden from my eyes. Hosea 13, 14. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, take away all guilt, accept that which is good and we will offer the fruit of our lips. Hosea 14.2 All this week our theme has been compassion for the world. What moves you? What calls you to action? Where do you see need? Where do you see hope? Where do you see your call to transform lives? to transform the world, to partner with God to make good things. Our anthology reading today comes from Divine Guidance by Susan Mudo and Adrian Van Kam. Following the way of forgiveness prepares us to go one step further. Something more is asked of us by Jesus. Go and learn the meaning of these words. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Matthew 9.13 This something more is compassion. Once we grasp the depth of God's merciful love for us, God wants us to express that same compassion for others. This is the balm that softens the scars of sinfulness and suffering. As we show mercy to others, so they will extend the blessing to us in turn. Ask yourself some revealing questions. And I'll read these questions with some pause so that you can reflect on them. Return to them on the video if you need to slow down. Do I sense the presence of suffering of the suffering Christ in others? Read that again. Do I sense the presence of the suffering Christ in others? Do I share their pain? Do I share their pain? Am I aware of their vulnerability? Am I aware of their vulnerability? Do I know that the need for mercy is often hidden under a mask of self-sufficiency, coldness, and indifference? Do I know that the need for mercy is often hidden under a mask of self-sufficiency, coldness, and indifference? Mm. Great questions for us to think about. For God so loved the world. John 3.16, that is a statement of God's mercy. And hopefully we can say the same. So Mark so loved the world that he did what? What did he do? When faced with the needs of those around him. But I like these questions. 
And part of it is the, the first the first three questions. Do I sense the presence of the suffering Christ and others? Do I share their pain? Am I aware of their vulnerability? Those are questions of awareness. And all too often, we get so wrapped up in us that we don't stop and be aware of the people around us. What do they need? This happens in my family. We sometimes forget, I try very hard not to, that when my daughter is sick or going through something that takes a lot of my attention, my other children also are in need. They are also dealing with it. It impacts them. But it's more than that, right? It's in our world. You go out to the store. Do you rush to get something? Or are you obsessed with your own shopping list, your own needs? Do you stop and see the needs of the people around you? Often I have wonderful and beautiful conversations. My cousin, Reverend Myers, uh, Melissa Myers, T- calls them uh, Panera experiences or something like Panera adventures. Uh, those those things that happen when we're just out and about uh, and, and we can do ministry. And that's just because we're aware. Because we open ourselves. We step out of the car. We step into the store and say, Lord, if there's an opportunity to share good news, allow me to do that. And so you'll find if you do that, people will open to you. People will open up to you. People, you'll make, we call them uh, new friends. Jennifer and I, we make new friends uh, everywhere we go. Because people are hurting. People are lonely. People are discouraged. People want love. So how can we do that? But this final question is so important. Because our own ideas of self-sufficiency, our own coldness, our own indifference, apathy, gets in the way of helping others. Well, they should do it for themselves. I hear this a lot in American Christianity. Pick themselves up by their, you know, why pick yourself up by your own bootstraps, which ironically was a jab when it came out like a hundred years ago. Uh, I recently looked at the, uh, uh, the the origins of that phrase, uh, and it was kind of a, a jab at at a certain type of culture, which is is funny that we've used it as this great American thing these days. But but I've seen that you know well, why are we giving this person money? They're just going to use it on cigarettes and drugs. Okay, prodigal son, I got it. <laughs> like prodigal brother, I you know like I got it. I know I know who you are. It's okay. Uh, but but I've I've lived through that in, in the life of the church. Why are we helping these people? Because they need help. If I offer you help, I, I'm, I'm not going to walk around and make sure you do it well. Now, if you want to live in that relationship where, where we can truly help you, I think that's, that's what we can offer. But that apathy and that coldness and that indifference, that prevents us from doing so much good. It gives us excuses. We've been talking about that, right? Gives us too many excuses. When all we need is just an opportunity to share love. Don't make excuses. Just do good. Our final scripture this week is Luke 7, 11 through 17. A little later, Jesus went to a city called Nain. His disciples and a great crowd traveled with him. As he approached the city gate, a dead man was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow. A large crowd from the city was with her. When he saw her, the Lord had compassion for her and said, Don't cry. He stepped forward and touched the stretcher on which the dead man was being carried. Those carrying him stood still. Jesus said, Young man, I say to you, Get up. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Ostra. Everyone praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding area. God bless the reading of the scripture today.
Jesus knew, like you and I know, that everyone dies. It's part of the human condition. We will die. You want to get into why that is? Whatever. The short and simple of it is our bodies are not designed to last forever. We will die. It's one of the the only truths of life. <laughs> Everyone will die. You know, you have to say, you know, <coughs> yeah, you have to, you know, eat, sleep, and pay taxes and die. You don't have to do those other things. You just have to die. That is the one thing we will all share in common. Jesus knew that. People were dying every hour of every day. But when faced with that incredible grief, that human experience, Christ had compassion and raised that young man from the dead. Now, at the end of the day, Christ had great compassion for all humans and would do something that would defeat death and sin <coughs> and evil forever. He rose again. The resurrection is that defining moment in human history that transforms death to life, that offers life and life abundant, life forever. But sometimes in the midst of things, you just offer compassion for what's in front of you. We can partner with Christ in big reconciling work. I truly believe that. But we also partner with Christ by just sitting with people in grief. By just offering a loaf of bread. By just giving of ourselves a little bit more. By just sharing love. Friends, the world needs your compassion. And your compassion should move you into action to share that love. On this final day of the week, we reflect on our offerings, how we can serve and give with our time, our talents, and our treasures, how we are called to be an offering in all things we do. Let us reflect in a moment how we may continue to grow in giving and adopt an attitude of gratitude. Friends, let us pray the Wesley Covenant Prayer. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. 
O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.